How's it going, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Crypto Clout, the YouTube show where you subscribe for all of the greatest cryptocurrency updates that we have to offer and breaking news and such. And of course, today, I think that we'll be talking about Cardano um, in the light of what we've been seeing happening. Uh, of course, I'd also like to discuss Bitcoin uh, currently trading at 9,500. And it's pretty interesting to see right now we're really in a interesting crossroads as far as where we can expect to see cryptocurrency evolving from this point moving forward and it's going to be very exciting to see uh, if we could actually get our hands on some really discounted cryptocurrencies and I'm personally rooting for Bitcoin to go down. I think that, I mean, if we could see uh, 8000 or even a $7,500 Bitcoin, uh, that would be something pretty special. A lot of people have speculated that uh, the backed uh, news is having a lot to do with what's happening right now involving the Bitcoin price. And uh, I think that it's interesting. Um, I mean, something very uh significant to talk about. Uh, so of course, we're going to be getting into that. And of course, discussing how all this stuff is going to be affecting the world of the altcoins. Uh, I think that it's important to discuss the altcoins, but really uh, talking about any particular altcoin price is essentially just a roundabout way of discussing Bitcoin. So it's something that we really can't ignore. But I think that right now we could be seeing a very interesting um, shift in the narrative that's currently happening that, of course, will make it possible for the smart contracts uh, and, of course, the sort of next generation of cryptocurrencies to see uh, a big opening and, of course, capitalize on that opening as well. Uh, an article I wanted to uh, start the video off by discussing here it uh is this uh charles hoskinson uh, from ethereum to cardano and iohk so uh this will be interesting of course uh I mean, it talks about this interview that he did. And, um, you know, as someone who is incredibly familiar with the crypto industry as a whole, Charles has become a staunch advocate for crypto as a currency of the future. He widely represents uh, and recognizes that young people, that younger generation, uh, especially in the developing world, uh, statistically prefer uh, storing their wealth in cryptocurrency rather than their national currency or even national stock market. Market. Uh, Hodgkinson discusses in detail how new coins can provide holders with value and increase their value over time. He is a major advocate for decentralization and universal accessibility to uh, components he believes helps uh, make uh, these coins so appealing to new investors. And, uh, you know, essentially that sort of hits the nail on the head of, uh, you know, what I wanted to talk about uh, now right here, you know, especially in the developing world, I think that that's one of the oftentimes overlooked, um, you know, themes. And it's something that I like to touch upon in videos as much as physically possible. Uh, I mean, in part because the, uh, you know, global sort of stage is one of those interesting uh, components to look at, uh, you know, when we want to talk about the uh, cryptocurrency paradigm shift that we're seeing. But, I think that countries uh, like Canada and the United States and uh, in a large part, uh, Russia and uh, you know, developed nations, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, which have already sort of put in place a lot of uh, infrastructure that at this point does in fact seem like uh, uh, an advantage. Uh, and it, it does sort of act as an advantage. But at the same time, um, I think that that could also be sort of um, a double edged sword in that same sense. I mean, when we want to talk about the fact that a lot of developing countries simply just do not have the old infrastructure that's working to hold back um, the progress in a lot of uh, the ways. And this is really going to be playing a big role, I would say, as far as we see the uh, overall accessibility of cryptocurrency. I mean, the, the cold hard truth is that there's no real actual demand for a crypto like Bitcoin right now um, in somewhere like the United States, at least not yet. I mean, nobody's going to argue against that. I mean, the fact of the matter is you have a bank that's fully functioning. You don't actually have a 
um, you know, you don't see that need, um, which is why I think cryptocurrency is going to be one of a, a real catalyst uh, for change and shifting in uh, overall global dynamics uh, as far as we see wealth um, coming into, you know, the whole banking of the unbanked argument does sort of come up uh, in a large sense. I'd say that, uh, you know, of course, the fact that Cardano has been able to pinpoint a lot of these other uh, actors uh, on the global scale, including uh, not limited to, you know, Africa and the, all these other parts of the world as well, um, which, of course, now uh, will be able to leverage, uh, you know, the, the their own uh, potential. And I think as we see the technology of um, cell phones and, of course, uh, being able to access the Internet, uh, becoming more widely uh, you know, accepted. I think that this could posit a very interesting scenario, which could, in fact, result um, in what you know, some would term a cryptocurrency bull run um, you know, of sorts. Um, you know, of course, Bitcoin will be accepted over 25,000 retail locations at stores such as, uh, you, know, you know, of course, uh, in France uh, by next year. So, I mean, definitely interesting. I mean, well, some places are uh, working to get crypto out of their, uh, you know, out of their hair. I mean, a lot of uh, governmental bodies and, and, the, and such and the like have been, uh, of course, you know, working to stifle, um, you know, the uh, advancement in as many ways as they can. Um, but at the same time, uh, we're seeing that uh, you know certain areas of the world working to um, you know bring in cryptocurrency and I think that I mean it will actually be interesting to see uh, who goes uh, who falls behind and who pulls ahead um, and I think that the catalysts are in the developing world uh, and very likely to actually have a huge leap um, you know, sort of a quantum leap uh, advantage, if you will, uh, over a lot of uh, other countries that right now might seem like major players, but will in fact be left in the digital stone age uh, simply because of their own ignorance. And um, I mean, that is a shame, um, you know, which is important why I think that people who, you know, advocate for cryptocurrencies, I mean, no matter where you are in the world, I know, you know, this is the internet. So there's obviously an international audience of people uh, who are watching this. Um, I'd always recommend, you know, just, um, bring up cryptocurrency in conversation. I mean, it, it does go a long way just starting the conversation. Um, you know, so this right here, I mean, Japan joins, uh, you know, brigade of uh, Libra cautious countries. Um, this is good to see. Uh, I think that, you know, I think it's more important to be cautious over um, Facebook than it is honestly to, um, I, I mean, I think that a lot of uh, the criticism that goes towards Bitcoin is, um, you know, sort of like gaslighting uh, when in reality, the actual threat uh, does sort of come uh, when we want to talk about, you know, this data and, you know, of course, so this article goes on to say, even the more pro cryptocurrency countries are worried about the risk spark by cross-border transactions through a private economy such as Libra. Um, I mean, this is going to be very interesting to see. And I think, um, I'm, you know, there'll be a lot of normies who get, um, you know, sidetracked by fake cryptocurrencies, for lack of a better term. Um, and I think that, I mean, those of us who are, um, you know, well and aware, uh, I mean, who've been in the, in the game early enough, um, you know, and have taken the time to be educated and all these different things and know what, uh, what to look for. I don't think that we'll be caught up um, in any of these different issues um, as they come up. And, um, but it is an interesting time, uh, nonetheless, to see how a lot of these different variables are uh, changing the way that we look at uh, the global economy and how a lot of these different um, variables uh, actually present a very important paradigm shift that's um, certainly going to be um, feeling some effects uh, as we move through the future. Um, you know, we want to talk about Bitcoin as like the introduction of digital gold, um, Ethereum, uh, building on top of that, you know, with smart contracts. And now, of course, uh, you know, entering into what I would term as like the next uh, logical step, uh, which would be a cryptocurrency like Cardano, um, which has, you know, an all in one. And, um, you know, a lot of people do talk about the um, 
the fact that Cardano doesn't necessarily have a product out right now, which does sort of save it from criticism uh, in a large sense. Whereas, you know, when you want to talk about something, for example, like XRP, you could uh, point towards uh, various different flaws. But right now, Cardano sort of uh, be, you know, having the advantage of being in its own personal, you know, its own current uh, situation does sort of have that opportunity to uh, grow. And, you know, of course, scientific, uh, all these other things things, uh, you know, pi compiling together, which I would say uh, will be making a pretty interesting splash um, in the scene. So all that being said, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Of course, remember, um, you know, this video is for entertainment, educational purposes only. Obviously, it's not financial advice. I'm not your dad. You know, make sure you do your own research. Um, but all that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.